Grand rising or grand evening, depending upon what time you are listening. This is Sean Speaks with FreeYourThinkingMind.com. And today I have a treat for you. We have a guest blogger. Her name is Miss uh, Carrie Irene Crosby. And she has written for us the February blog. It's entitled When Love Speaks. Miss Carrie is the uh, owner and founder of ATBA Impact Group LLC. And um, she is going to be also presenting her blog on the broadcast today. Um, and so I just wanted to uh, introduce her. Uh, our affirmation for today is I am the love I speak. I am the love I speak. Ashe, free thinkers, Ashe, may what you say manifest in your life today and every day. The next voice you'll hear is Miss. Carrie Irene Crosby. Ashe. When Love Speaks. We learn about love at an early age, how it feels, what actions it embodies, and how it is to be received. So it is important that we evaluate our teachers. Those who teach us about love have had teachers of their own. When you couple that with the individual experiences of love, the definition expands and at times also simultaneously diminishes. What is love? When we say love, we expect others to understand what that means to us. I challenge you to really ask yourself if you even know what it means to you. We must define love for ourselves before we can share it with anyone else. Even though we borrow the definition of love from our teachers, when we begin to practice love, we uniquely craft our expression of love in a way that suits us, and in turn, we create a dialect within us in which love is to be understood. This dialect will be reflected to us with smiles, conversations, and passions uniquely understood and desired by us. What does your love say? Are you afraid for your definition of love to be changed? Are you in turn imprisoning yourself to your own definition? Does your love say to others they are free to share their own unique dialect of love with you? Or do you confine people to only mimicking back your own? When I think of my teachers of love, I've realized that they were many, all vastly different. My mother was an inverted ripe apple, sweet and juicy on the outside, while the bruises live within. My father was delicate steel. My sister was an even mix of them both. I have two brothers and their love was cool as the wind. I knew I could feel it, but I could not really see it. As for me, I found myself feeling like an orphan of love. Though I could pick up on their dialects of love, I never fully understood love. I was taught what to feel, but not how to say it. I knew what not to want, yet not how to not want it. Yet still here I am breaking all the rules. The rules bind love? I reflected on my prayers of love and what my heart longed to feel, yet I went day to day, relationship to relationship, never fully sharing all the feelings I did not know how to put into words. Words. I had prayed for a safe place for my love to reside. I wanted the right words. I wanted a pretty love, a creative love, a hippie kind of love, a passionate love. What I did not ask was the appropriate questions to me. What is pretty? What is creative? What is hippie? What is passionate? Words and letters couple to make sounds. Those sounds give expression to feelings and those feelings actualize into things, places, and actions. But if we do not share the same definitions of words, it is impossible for us to share the same definitions of love. Love and its truths for me have awakened. So wouldn't it be most important to know what love is to us rather than trying to find it in others? Only when we can define what we feel which will define how we want to feel, 
can we be heard by the ones who can pick up on our unique dialect of love? We all must establish our own unique love language. And even when words die, our feelings are revived by the dialect of another and new expressions of love are experienced. There need not be words for us to understand love, but an assurance that we have an ear for it. This ear is cultivated from the redefining on the inside that vibrates a message that we can in fact receive. When you establish love for yourselves, you can receive what the mouth never has to speak. For love will then speak to you from the vibrations that another seeps. Love is fluent in human experience, not words. It not only meets us hospitably where we are, but it scopes the scene before ever arriving. Love is a language, sort of. Not everyone speaks the same one, true. However, that language of love which we speak is only a form, a certain dialect, if you will, of love. True love speaks clearly to us all because love is not bound to words. We may speak love differently, but we all understand love when it speaks to us.